Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Pam and Whisper again. We're ready to do another story time with you. I hope you're ready. Do you have your stuffed animal or your blanket or whatever you like to snuggle with for stories? I'll sing the ABC song with you again one time while you go and grab what you need. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Jesus died for you and me. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Jesus died for sinful men. Amen. O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. I believe God's word is true. U, V, W. God has promised you X, Y, Z. A home eternally. Are you ready? Today we have two stories about tricksters. Two bad characters who play tricks on people. But in the end, they get tricked on themselves. The first story is Hannah's Hog. And in this story, as you can tell, a lady named Hannah owns a hog. In order to call her hog, she does a pig call. Have you ever heard anybody call pigs? It sounds like this. Sue! Sue pig! Sue! Pig, pig, pig! You have to help me. Every time Hannah calls her pig, I need you to help me. It's three parts. The first part goes like this. Sue! Can you do that with me? Sue! The second part goes like this. Sue pig! Do it with me. Sue pig! And the last part is Sue pig pig pig! Let's put it all together. Here we go. Sue! Sue pig! Sue pig pig pig! All right, let's get started with Hannah's hog. Hannah Brody lived back on the mountain. She raised chickens for the eggs, kept bees for the honey, and she worked a big garden. She also had a fine fat hog that she let run loose in the woods. Now most hogs that run loose soon turn to wild, but not Hannah's hog. Hannah kept her hog as tame as a pup by saving back things that hogs are partial to, like melon rinds and cobs from roasting ears and such. And once a day, she'd call it in. Sue, Sue, pig, Sue, pig, pig, pig. And that hog would come running. Hannah never had a bit of trouble with it. As a matter of fact, about the only kind of trouble Hannah did have was the human kind. His name was Ken Jackson, and he lived about two miles away on the other side of the woods. The trouble was that Hannah kept coming up short on chickens, and although she hadn't caught him at it, Hannah was powerful certain that Kenny Jackson was doing it. But every time Hannah asked him about it, he just looked uncomfortable and tried to put the blame on a fox or a chicken hawk or something. Hannah didn't believe it. The last straw came one afternoon when Hannah went out, as usual, to call in her hog. Sue! Sue pig! Sue pig pig pig! No hog. She called again, louder. Sue, Sue, pig, Sue, pig, pig, pig. Still no hog. Hannah was fit to be tied. After searching high and low most of that night and half the next morning to make sure her hog hadn't just run off or took sick or something, Hannah decided to go visit Kenny Jackson. A few chickens is one thing, but a fat hog is altogether a different matter. Something had to be done. 
When Hannah drove up to Kenny's yacht, Kenny was sitting on the porch. I've come up missing my hog, said Hannah. You ain't seen her up this way, have you? Kenny answered real sweet like. Why, no, Hannah, I sure ain't. There ain't been a hog around this place in years, as a matter of fact. Hannah looked him straight in the eye and didn't say anything. It made Kenny sort of nervous. So he kept on talking. But if you're missing your hog, maybe that feller that was through here last week was right after all. Right about what? asked Hannah. Well, I didn't believe it at the time, said Kenny, but that feller told me he saw a sign of a bear back yonder in the woods. Maybe he was right. Maybe a bear took your hog. I'd be real careful if I was you. Hannah knew that a bear hadn't been seen in that country for more than 50 years. So she found Kenny's tail a bit hard to swallow. But not knowing what else to do just then, she started up the truck, thanked Kenny kindly for the warning, and headed for home. On the way out of the yard, however, Hannah caught sight of hog tracks by the barn. And she knew that Kenny was lying. That rascal, Hannah said to herself, then she went on home to think things over. She spent the rest of the day in her garden, fuming about her hog and cussing Kenny Jackson. By evening, she had herself a plan. When it got dark, she took a piece of broken rake and a bit of rope and snuck on over to Kenny's place, quiet as she could be. She slipped up into the yard where she could see the house, sat down behind a rhododendron bush, and waited. Before long, Kenny came out, walked over to the outhouse, and went inside. Do you know what an outhouse is? Back in the day, before there were toilets inside the house, there were toilets outside the house. This is an outhouse. You go inside, sit on the wooden seat, and do your business. It was just what Hannah was waiting on. What do you think she's got up her sleeve? Quiet, quiet, quiet. Hannah crept up and started making growling noises in the back of her throat. And with that busted rake, she started scratching the back of that outhouse, gouging claw marks into the wood. Do you get what she's doing? She's making those bear sounds, and with the rake, she's making pretend bear claw marks. From the inside, it all sounded like a bear out there, sure enough. And Kenny was plumb scared to death. Too scared to holler, too scared to run. So he just stayed in there holding the door shut with all his might. In the meantime, Hannah went over to the barn, found a spot where she wouldn't leave a track, scratched some claw marks on the side of the barn and broke off a few boards. Then quick as a wink, she put the rope on her hog and led it off through the woods to home. Hannah was so tickled pink to get her hog back that she laughed right out loud to the moon and danced a little jig there in the eye. But before she went inside to bed, she took that piece of rake and made a few claw marks on the side of her truck. Bright and early the next morning, Hannah drove back over to see Kenny. He was out on the porch, and there was a shotgun leaning against the post. I come to thank you for warning me about that bear, said Hannah. 
Last night I was out in the woods hunting for my hog when the bear comes tearing out of the brush. I just barely had time to jump in the truck. He'd have got me for sure if I hadn't had an eye out for him. That fellow you was talking with was right after all, just like you said. Kenny came down into the yard and ran his finger across the marks on Hannah's truck. I had the same trouble over this way, said Kenny. That bear had me holed up most of the night. I thought I was a goner. Busted up my barn, too, looking for something to eat, I reckon. My, 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 said Hannah. Looks like we're both lucky to be alive. Right you are about that, said Kenny. From that day on, Hannah stopped coming up short on chickens. She guessed it was because Kenny was too scared to go into the woods. And Hannah was right. Truth is, he didn't even go to the outhouse without taking his shot. As for the hog, all Hannah do had to do was call Sue, Sue, pig, Sue, pig, 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 and it would come running every time. Hannah's hog. I like stories about tricksters when they end up with the person playing the trick getting in trouble in the end and Kenny Jackson sure did. I have another story about a trickster, Anansi and the moss-covered rock. Anansi stories come from Africa. Anansi is a spider who's always trying to play tricks and who always gets caught in the end. For this story, there's a phrase that gets repeated over and over again. Walking, walking, walking through the forest. When I read that part, I want you to use your hands, excuse me, whisper, and walk them along your feet like that, or along your legs like this. Walking, walking, walking through the forest. There's another word that gets said over and over, and it's kapam! And you can join me for that part too. Anansi and the moss covered rock. Once upon a time, Anansi the spider was walking, walking, walking through the forest when something caught his eye. It was a strange moss-covered rock. How interesting, Anansi said. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kabam! Everything went black. Down fell Anansi, senseless. An hour later, Anansi woke up. His head was spinning. He wondered what had happened. I was walking along the path when something caught my eye. I stopped and said, Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kabam! Down fell Anansi again. But this time, when he woke up an hour later, he knew what was happening. Aha, said Anansi, this is a magic rock. And whenever anyone comes along and says the magic words, isn't this a strange hmm, 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 down he goes. This is a good thing to know, said Anansi, and I know just how to use it. So Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest until he came to Lion's house. Lion was sitting on his porch. At his feet was a great pile of yams. Anansi loved yams, but he was too lazy to dig them up himself. Anansi said to Lion, Hello, Lion. It is very hot today. Don't you think so? Yes, Anansi, said Lion. It is terribly hot. I am going for a walk in the cool forest, said Anansi. Would you like to come? I certainly would, said Lion. Now, I'm going to point something out to you. 
might be hard to see. There's a little face here watching what's going on. Keep a lookout for that little face. So Lion and Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest. After a while, Anansi led Lion to a certain place. Lion, do you see what I see? Oh yes, Anansi said Lion. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapong! Down fell Lion. Anansi ran back to Lion's house and took all of Lion's yams. There's that little face watching what's going on. Keep an eye out. An hour later, Lion woke up. His head was spinning. Anansi was nowhere in sight, and when he got home, he found that every single one of his yams was gone. Lion was very sad. But Anansi was very happy. He couldn't wait to play his trick again. Once more, Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest. This time he stopped at Elephant's house. Elephant was sitting on his porch. At Elephant's feet was a great pile of bananas. Anansi loved bananas, but he was too lazy to pick them himself. So he said to Elephant, Hello, Elephant. Isn't it hot today? It is, Elephant agreed. I am going for a walk in the cool forest, Anansi said. Would you like to come? That sounds nice, said Elephant. Thank you for inviting me, Anansi. There's that little face, keeping an eye on things. I bet you know what's going to happen. So Anansi and Elephant went walking, walking, walking through the forest. After a while, Anansi led Elephant to a certain place. Elephant, look, do you see what I see? Elephant looked. Yes, I do, Anansi. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapam! Down fell Elephant. And Anansi ran back to Elephant's house and made off with all his bananas. An hour later, Elephant woke up. His head was spinning. Anansi was nowhere in sight, and when he got home, he found that every single one of his bananas was gone. Elephant was very sad. There's the little face again. But Anansi was very happy. He couldn't wait to play his trick again. He played it on rhinoceros and hippopotamus. He played it on giraffe and on zebra. He played it on every single animal in the forest. But all this time, watching from behind the leaves was little bush deer. The bush deer is small and shy and very hard to see. She watched Anansi play his wicked trick again and again on all the other animals. Little bush deer decided it was time for Anansi to learn a lesson. So little bush deer went deep into the forest where the coconut trees grow. She climbed a coconut tree and threw down a great many coconuts. She carried the coconuts home in a basket and set them on her porch. Then she sat down beside them to wait. In a little while along came Anansi. Anansi's eyes lit up when he saw Little Bush Deer's coconuts. Anansi loved coconuts. 
He loved to eat the tender white coconut meat and drink the sweet coconut milk inside. But he was much too lazy to gather coconuts himself. Instead, he said, hello, little bush deer. It is so hot today. Little bush deer smiled. It is very hot, Anansi. I am going for a walk in the cool forest. Would you like to come? Yes, I would, said little bush deer. So Anansi and little bush deer went walking, walking, walking through the forest. After a while, Anansi led little bush deer to a certain place. Little bush deer, look over there. Do you see what I see? Little bush deer knew all about Anansi's trick. She looked. No, Anansi, I don't see anything. You must see it. Look very carefully. Little bush deer looked. No, I still don't see anything, she said. Anansi began to get angry. You must see it. Look over here. Look right where I'm pointing. Do you see it? No, Anansi, said little bush deer. Anansi stomped his legs. You see it. You just don't want to say it. Say what, said little bush deer. You know. Is that what I'm supposed to say? Yes, said Anansi. All right, then I will say it to make you happy. You know, said little bush deer. There, I said it. Are you happy? No, Anansi shouted. You're not supposed to say you know. What am I supposed to say? You're supposed to say, isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapam! Down fell Anansi. Little bush deer ran and got all the other animals. Together they went back to Anansi's house and took back all the good things he had stolen from them. An hour later, Anansi woke up. His head was spinning. Little bush deer was nowhere in sight, and when he got home, he found his house as empty as it was before. But if you think Anansi learned his lesson, you're mistaken. Because he's still playing tricks to this very day. I hope you liked those two trickster stories. They're two of my favorites. You may be small, like little bush deer, but that doesn't mean that you can't do good and right things. I hope for the rest of today, or if you're watching this at night tomorrow, you'll focus on being little bush deer and not on being an Anansi. Bye, see you next time.